this is why women should run the world because we're so stupid, Alex. Like, you got men, men paying thousands of dollars. Let me see your feet. Ah. Yo, show. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome to the Yo Show. It is Michael. Yo, thank you for all the subscribes. Thank, I mean, thank you for all the love on the comedy special. Some of the clips have over 10 million views. Thing is really taking off because of you. Because of you, subscribe, hit the bell, hit the button, all that good stuff. Alex is here. Uh, man. You sounded disappointed about that. No, no, no. I'm excited. There's just so much on my mind right now. It's so crazy because I'm shooting a couple shows. Look, I'm blessed right now. I'm shooting a couple shows. I fly in. I fly out. Uh, this show, this social media platform, all the platforms have really changed my life in the last I would say six months, where now nonstop, because I travel so much, I get stopped all the time from my YouTube page. And I said this before on the show. I used to hear about that from, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And now from friends that are blew up on YouTube, but now to be that receiver. And I'm on a lower level, and I still get stopped all the time. I can only imagine like Mr. Beast and, oh my and people like I, that. I mean, you saw the mall. Yeah. That he did open that burger shop in. It's insane. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. Insane. I th I think it's coming to the level of um of what is it? Uh, traditional celebrities. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well, my friend said it perfect. Eric Griffin was like, You remember when people made fun of Instagram models when they first started? Now Instagram models are the models. Yeah, that's so true. So so now it feels like other outlets, other platforms, if they make it are the new thing. Yeah, like, why would I be published on blank when I could just make a post and make a million bucks? Like, and own you know? it. And own it. Yeah. Like, I've made, I, I shot my special, and I appreciate all you guys watching it, but from it being on different platforms, I've already made it back three times. You know, it's only been six months. So it's this message is for anybody that's out there. If you have an idea and you know you can put it out yourself, film it, put it out yourself, because... If it works out, man, the it's so beneficial. Yeah, and if it didn't work out, I was prepared to lose that money too. But just knowing and seeing how it played out, and it's only growing every month because new people keep finding it. But the cool part is if you have a talent, if you have a passion, you could actually do it and not risk any money. That's Wanna true know too. Why? Because we all got these. Yeah. Right? So you could make a viral video on your phone if it's creative enough, if it's good enough with, if you have a passion, like if you're doing comedy, I know tons of comedians who just posted on TikTok. Yeah. And now they're getting real gigs. They're making real money. They have real sponsors and, uh, it, and they're still on their iPhone. They don't care. I was with a comic at the comedy cellar and he had 20,000 fans and he goes, I'm gonna try to put up a video every day on Instagram. Now he has like 130,000 and it was only like a month and a half. So, the opportunity is there. You just like, sometimes I get in this funk is where it's like, ah, I don't want to shoot. I don't want to shoot. But now in my mind, it clicks. Like this is my only day in town. I'm like, I need to shoot. Cause this is a big part of my platform and you guys watching is a big part of my life now. So I need to provide content for you guys. Now, speaking about content, I'm pushing this over. Let's get the wide on this, pushing it over. That looks like a spider. I want everybody to look at this right here. When you're married, when you're married, you will find things like this in your house. I thought it was a bug. Yeah. When I walk, it's it. Now, we are in my podcast studio. Okay. Let's just say it. this is like. We also live in the desert. We live in the desert. Yes. But this is my man cave. <laughs> oh, okay. I got you. see what I mean? Like, like, nobody. This is my space. Look, my wife and kids have the rest of the house. And it's also interesting that men brag about having 300 square feet and not the entire house. <laughs> like we brag, well, I got my man cave. You got 300 square feet out of your house, but whatever, whatever. So to my surprise, I come into my room. I'm like, oh, there's a, there's a bug on my desk. And I look closer and I'm like, this is my wife's fake eyelashes. Those eyelashes? Look at how long these eyelashes are. Look at that, zoom in on that. Don't get my nails, they're ugly, but zoom in on that. You see that? Those are eyelashes. So this is my wife. This is my wife right here. This oh, is, no, don't do it. This is her. <laughs> no, no. My this is my God. wife. When she goes out, this is my wife. Like It's crazy. Look at this. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see how I look at it. See, that's the thing. Look at how <laughs> long those lashes are. 
I look super Asian in these lashes. Anyway, uh, so yeah, they. My, so I I haven't brought it up to my wife, but this is what happens when you get married. I remember when I first moved to LA 15, 16 years ago, way before I met my wife, I was dating this woman. And I didn't know in LA, and she was on TV as well, I didn't know in LA that there was fake hair. Because I'm from Texas. Everybody has real hair, big hair, whatever. And then everywhere I moved, I never knew there was extensions and hair. So, you know, I'm at this person's house and I wake up in the morning. I thought it was like a, a dog on the couch. Like it was just a bunch of fake hair on a couch. I was like, I walked over to it, wasn't and I kind of like poked it and it was hair. You know what the craziest thing about that is? People are also willing to pay a premium. For real hair. Oh, the I, I don't know what type of hair. Is it Indian hair they love? I have no clue, but people buy hair. Oh, yeah. Like oh, yeah. real hair. People love the hair, man. Hair is a big, big item people buy. But extension. So my first day at E! Entertainment, this is a, it's on cable. They, they interview celebrities, but a lot of women work there. It was the first time ever I went to a building and I walked into the, I guess, uh, makeup room. A wall full of hair, like, like just any hair you want, just any hair a woman would want, just all across the wall, every color, everything. And I was like, "Oh, this!" You know how they say Hollywood's magic, and how all these girls on TV have this long, beautiful hair, and it's full. I'm like, "Oh, it's this wall." And then when they take it off, they <laughs> barely have any hair. I'm like, "Oh, wow, okay, this the is Hollywood, Hollywood magic is here. <laughs> the Hollywood magic is on this wall right now." It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Well, so that blew me away. I gotta say, man, my wife does not uh, does not do like the lashes or the makeup. Yeah, and uh, it's nice because rarely will we go, and and she's not ready. That's true. You know, that's like uh, I went to Vermont, and I made the joke. I was like, "Oh, you're real here. <laughs> you're real. <laughs> you're real." Like. A woman's never late for a date. You know, oh it's like, are gosh. you ready to go? She's like, I've been ready. You know, it's mm. like nobody wears. They must not have any makeup counters in Vermont because I didn't see one lady wear. <laughs> and not, but they're just natural. They're yeah. beautiful. But it's kind of like where you go. I, I travel across the country and some things uh, women wear a lot of makeup. Dallas, a lot of makeup. High, They'll dress up to a grocery store or the gym. Full makeup in a gym. Then you go to Vermont. These women have like these big jackets on. They don't care. They're more outdoorsy. They're not wearing makeup. We just interviewed an, an OnlyFans model. Oh, uh, yeah. On one of the other podcasts that I'm on. And uh, since I'm going to talk about her, her name's Kazumi. Look Kazumi, okay. Kazumi, okay. But the reason I'm bringing her up is because um, she calls it bimbofication or something. Or Bimbo being bimbofied. Bimbofied. Or something like that, right? And um, what is bimbo fying her only fans? So she, she's put in a hundred thousand dollars towards her body. Wow. And that includes a Brazilian butt lift, which she said is the most painful surgery she's ever and had. And a lot of people die. Well, not a lot of people, but some people die from it. Right. That. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's dangerous. crazy. Yeah. So she did that. She had ab etching. So yep. I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah. So she says that she has to stay in shape because if she doesn't, the abs look weird. Like if, you know what I mean? Cause yeah, because the fat will be over the abs. It's like, are, yeah. you, you, but you could still see it. It's like you're not supposed to have. Anyway, yeah. so she said she has to have abs. Obviously, she got the top done. Yeah. You know, um, did that. And then recently, she came back from before we saw her. And um, she had like a chin implant. And I didn't even know that you could do that. Did she look different from the first time you saw her and the second time? We did not notice until she told us. And uh -huh. I guess like maybe that's a good thing. Yeah, but like I'm thinking, like a hundred grand, like that's a down payment towards like a super nice house. Yeah, and your furniture. I'm see, like, see, it's it, but you know what? It's an investment. I'm just for <laughs> you know, her. No, no, for she's a business. Yeah, you know, and it's kind of like the only fan things is it's it goes back to what my friend said. You remember when we made fun of these Instagram models? Now they are the real models. Only fans, look, they did a lot of like yeah, dirty she, stuff she, on it. She, but some girls just model on it and make lots of money. And all you need is one big perv to love you. And they will give you. They love one, you forever. I, I read one story. This was yesterday. A guy, this woman makes $47,000 a month, right? And she gets $30,000 a year from one guy. 
And I'm like, and I don't know if she's perverted or what she does, but I mean, some people are paying just to see people's toes. Yep. And I go, that's how pathetic men are. We're like, let me see your feet. Let me see your feet. <laughs> you know, women, I, I, I can't imagine women being into other women's feet because they would just ask their girlfriends to go get a pedicure and boom, the satisfaction all you want right there. <laughs> you know, it's only dudes, dudes. The problem, this is why women should run the world because we're so stupid, Alex. Like, you got men, men paying thousands of dollars. Let me see your feet. Ah. Go out, go to the beach. Get your fix on at the beach. Everybody has There's also on. Google Images. That's all I'm Oh my say. God. It's yeah. free. It's free. It's free. And probably if you Google that person that you're spending all this, <laughs> they got pictures of her feet. There's, a, there's actually a website. Really? Called. Uh, Oh man, I forgot what it's called, but it has an archive of famous people's feet. I'm gonna search you up and see if you're on. Oh, there. I'm not because I'm not famous. Like I don't my my and I no, but they even have like internet celebrities. No, no, no. We'll my see, feet, man. We'll my see. My feet will not be. If anybody finds my feet, send it to. Me. I doubt it. I'm always wearing shoes. I never get caught slipping, Alex. I <laughs> never get caught. Back to what you were saying though. After she told us about all this, yes, she told us she had just cleared her fifth million. You know what? I, I have nothing to say after that. So. Five million dollars in one year, or over no, the time she's total, started? but I think it's only been like. Two, well, then that's a very it's hundred thousand like dollars. Years. There was a we were at the cellar, and there was a, a one of these OnlyFan couples that came front row, yeah. and of course they. Looked, oh, how'd you recognize them, Michael? No, they I'm told just, us. They kidding. told us the host asked because they were good looking. It's yeah. a guy and a girl. They were good looking. They stand and he goes, out. we do OnlyFans. You know, we're a couple on OnlyFans, yeah. and I'm like, man. You know, go for it. You know, if there's people that are going to pay, I don't judge. Get your rocks off. Hey, you're going to have sex anyway. Get paid for it. If you want to put it out in the world, go for it. That's my thing, man. Go for it. If there's a platform for you and that's your thing, go for it. But you got to deal, like any job, you got to deal with the consequences after. You know, you're only going to look hot so long. You know, you're only going to, you only. No, gonna I heard, be with no, then you just shift categories. What would it be then? Milf. Old hot woman? Milf. Milf. Oh, okay. That's a, that's, I think that that was like the hottest search term. Uh, Milf? They Yeah, they release like these statistics mm -hmm. every year about like what people search. And that's one of the top statistics. I will say this though. It's because older women take way better care. You remember, and maybe because we're older now, but I remember when I would see somebody 50, back when I was young, they look 50. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They look weathered. They look tired. They I know look exactly what you mean. They, you know what I'm saying, right? I know exactly what you're older saying. Older people look older. Yeah, they do. Now, you know, we know a lot more. We know how to eat. Like back in the day, they were like, oh, yeah, eat breakfast, eat, uh, drink Kool Aid that's filled with sugar. That's even, healthy. Even cereal, right? Cereal. They were encouraging you to eat McDonald's. Cereal fine. Yeah, Take yeah. cigarettes on planes. Go for it. You know. Yeah. But now we know more. We know how to eat better if you want. Uh, and it, it's a thing where there's more places to work out, and working out is something that people now try to put in their schedules. So now you got women and men that are fifty and sixty. Yep, look like they're in their forties. You know? I met I met people who are in their sixties. They legit like look late thirties. Like if I didn't have gray hair right now, a lot of people think I'm in my thirties. But I'm way like late thirties. But I'm way older than that. You know, I'm 187 years old. You know, I'm very old. People, black and Asian. <laughs> oh, black don't crack. Asian no raisin. Come on now. So I want to talk about politics for a second. So I want to let anyone that's listening or watching right now, if you're an election denier. You do not want to listen to this next part. You do not want to listen to this part. Just stop right now. If you really believe that elections are all false and you don't believe in a same election that your person lost, but other Republicans won on that same on that same election, but for some reason those people aren't rigged. <laughs> But your person was right. That, that's what I don't understand. Well, like, we need the watch time, so just mute it. Just watch it, but mute it. Yeah, just yes, we do need the watch time, so just mute it. <laughs> so this is what I'm going to say. This is what I, I thought about this. What The day before these elections, I was talking to my barber, 
and me and him got in the pond. Oh, that's that's where they the best. that's where they always start, man. It always starts at the barbershop. So I go, I really feel the way America's going right now, 25 years from now, I can see a dictator. I really can. You know, and we've had people run and one that was president. You don't think if they could be a dictator and change all the laws that they wouldn't? Of course they would. Yeah. Of course. A lot of people that have that power, they don't want to lose it. They don't want only eight years. So I really feel that was going to happen because I really felt, and even though I live in a, and this is why I love living in a 50-50 state, what you're about to hear is not going to lean one side or the other side. It's going to be very honest and true to both sides is I feel that the right side, the extreme right side or the MAGA group has a big voice, right? And I go, and the word was that it's a red wave coming and all the MAGA people were going to win. And even if some, there would, wouldn't be an honest voting system for real, because they actually denied that Joe Biden was the winner last year, or they denied every time they lose, they said before the election even starts to go, if I lose, it's rigged. Like, it's like, come on now. Now we're being ridiculous, right? So I don't watch the news anymore on purpose. So I'm like, let's see how this plays out. Because my friend is telling me this red wave and all this stuff is going to happen because he's heavy into the news, right? So then I'm like, let me check this out. I want to witness this myself. Then you hear the stories, no red wave. Uh, then you hear that uh, Democrats are going to keep the Senate. Republicans are going to get the House. And when I heard that, I'm like, that's how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be 50-50. You know, you never want both sides running one thing. And, I, and I'm, I'm independent. I vote for the best party. But I don't like it when one side has all the power. I, it should always be 50-50, where one side can do something, another side, and then they can try, try to meet in the middle. But what this did, what this did, is it proved America isn't there yet. On the cray cray. Like we still, <laughs> like we still want America to be a better place than it is right now. Yeah. It, you know, the hype was, oh, America voted for democracy. I don't want to use that, that tagline or anything. But I do feel that a lot of people felt like me that are kind of in the middle and independent that, yeah, this is going the wrong way. And if we continue it going the wrong way, it could get really ugly. And as an independent, I was like, you know what? Let's kind of like just vote for who we like rather than party. And I think that's what a lot of America, a lot of independents did. They didn't get caught up into what side they were on, whether, oh, like the, the ignorant, the most ignorant comment I hear is, well, I'm Republican. I always vote Republican. So that means it doesn't matter who's running your vote or Democrats. I'm a Democrat. I vote Democrat. It, that's the dumbest thing you could ever say to me, because that means it doesn't matter who runs on that ticket, no matter what, what they, they stand, stand for, you're going to vote that party. Yeah. And what happened was independence like me was like, yo, we don't like where this is going. And I think, and I think for the first time, everything is secular, goes through cycles. I think now you're seeing people, even the election deniers going, okay, we're even tired of it. This is old. You know, this is like saying, this is like some young person going, it's fresh. Like that's, that's a word we used. It's a tired word. Nobody says it's fresh anymore. And I feel like the election denier bit that Trump started way back. It's just tired now. I heard he's supposed to announce today. He is tonight. That he's running. He's supposed to announce tonight. We'll see. Like we're taping this on Tuesday where he's supposed to announce. This is probably coming out a couple days later. But if that happens to me, great. Because it's another chance for people like me, independents, to make a decision, you know? And, but I really feel, this is what I, and I, I say all this to get to this point. I like that, that it seems like, yes, there's a small group or a group that believes the election deniers and all that stuff, and Trump's a man, and that's fine. You, you can like whoever you like. But I feel that the tired, like we're tired of fighting. And that makes me feel good is where people are exhausted of hearing this. We should hate each other. We should go against each other. We should not like each other. Just because you're Republican, I can't talk to you and vice versa. It's, it's tired. 
It's tired. And I feel that this election, the 2022 election, proves that we're getting to that point. And I think if Donald Trump, and we're talking before he announces, let's say he does announce, I think that will speed up the process of being tired of it even more. Because if he didn't run, it could kind of linger, I feel. Yeah. Now, in two years, if he is the candidate, it's going to be a clear choice of, yeah. And I really think a year from now, and I could be dead wrong, but I think he's going to know, like the whole party's going to know if he is the candidate, he's losing. 100%. Because I think people are just over it. it. And that's the thing. That's a better, just over it. We're over it. Okay. Uh, we're, I don't want to hear election deniers anymore. I just want to vote. You remember when I was growing up, you, you voted and that was it? Whoever won one now it's like twenty four seven news and well back back when I was like younger it used to be like you would wear your uh, your I voted sticker yeah and people would be like oh great job you voted and yeah. it's like who'd you vote for like like you know what I mean well Before now they, it's a it's a what's funny how everything very simple they, becomes they political start to people that post stickers now are all cons like viewed as Democrats yeah yes and it's like. It's a democratic thing to do to, to put vote? a sick where early when when I was a kid, everybody wanted to vote and everybody was proud of the sticker. Yeah. And, the, and the thing is, one side is like you should every it has the American flag on it. You should be <laughs> proud of it. One side is all about we got to make America bring it back. Well, that's the sticker that said I voted for America. Yeah. And I've said this before on the podcast. There always needs to be an enemy. Right. Trump wants to run again because it slows down the prosecution on him with the other court cases. That's the main reason he wants to run. He wants to be president without the work. He doesn't want a campaign. That's exact. Look, I just tour a little bit here. And like I go out two, two times a month. This dude, when you campaign for the next two years, he's in a plane. He doesn't want to do that. He's 76, 77. I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. He just wants the reward of being president. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's all he wants. Doesn't want to put in the work. Pardon himself again. <laughs> no, 100%. And it slows everything down for him. But what I hate about this, though, is that right off the bat, I'm also like you. I'm very um, independent. I'm yeah. very moderate. And uh, the thing I hated when I registered to vote is they, they ask you. They start splitting you right from the beginning. Mm -hmm. It's like you ask for – they have, like, a couple sections, like Democrat, Republican. Uh, independent, uh, Independent, right? Yeah. And I'm like – that question just send me a ballot. Well, is just it, send me a well, ballot. Let me, let me ask you this. You, you know, we talk about invasion of privacy. Isn't that an invasion of like? Why do y'all need to know? Yeah. Why? I mean, of course you don't have to check it, but why do y'all even need to know that? It doesn't matter. But you know why? So they can send you these freaking emails twenty four seven oh, saying you haven't given. Crazy. And I, since I'm an independent, I get it from both sides, and it drives me nuts. It drives me nuts. That shouldn't even be a question when you vote. What party are you? Yeah, I'm the American Party. How about that? <laughs> the uh, the party of America that wants it to be awesome. Speaking of divisive politics, yes. One thing that I wanted to talk about here, mm -hmm. I wanted to talk about um, Dave Chappelle. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So he's been getting some heat about this joke. Which one? Well, he did the opening monologue for SNL. That joke. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's a monologue. It was like 20 something minutes long. So it wasn't one joke. It was just a lot. He said, I thought it was brilliant. Yeah, I thought it was funny. I thought it was brilliant. I thought the Kanye West stuff was great. I thought, um, like I said, it, it, it's very interesting to me. We're in a time. Where comedians' words are held to a higher standard than politicians. Isn't that crazy? It blows me away. Like, comedians, the clowns in class, are the ones that are held to a higher standard than politicians. You have politicians lying on camera. You have politicians digging at each other, like saying the rudest things to each other. But they get away with it. But a comedian says the wrong thing, it's terrible news and they're going to get canceled. That that just blows me away. Like there are some comedians that put on people with different points of views. Some may be right, some may be wrong. But I know a lot of these people, and I don't go to them for that real – I would never go to a certain podcaster and go, yo, I need you to give me medical advice. 
You know, like, that, like I've <laughs> oh known this God. dude forever. Like, I'm not going to him asking him, hey, man, so what surgery should I get for this? Yeah. You know, I go to a doctor. And for comedians that have large podcasts to be held in a, to a higher standard than politicians, that's just ridiculous. And y'all are searching for something to complain about, to break down about. Look, and if you know me and you know this, I'm not about hateful speech at all. But I do feel... In saying that, comedians, just like anybody else, need to be held for what they say, right? I never say they shouldn't be responsible for what they said. But let's look at the facts that when a comedian says something, it's held to a higher standard than a, a politician. And that's where it starts. Like, and you're coming to our shows when we're doing practice shows, practicing material, going, that's the finished product. No, when you see it on a special, then criticize it. But when you're at a club, we're working it out. Like when you came to the club and saw me, I was working out stuff. It's not done when it's on tape. When it's out in the world, and I purposely put it out in the world, it's done. I want you to judge it. When I'm in a club, I don't need you to judge it. You're not there to, you're, I'm there to see if it works and hopefully it makes you laugh. I just think that there's a difference between going up on stage and, and, trying out jokes that involve race like or religion whatever you want to call it and maybe it's funny but not it's not funny to everybody and that's okay yeah that's okay but i do i i have seen it's younger comics that are trying to find their way or be really risky they'll just go up there and say mean shit that and was, is that and and that they're just being hateful up that there used and to they, slide like what 20 years ago yeah right that was like like if you went up there and you just said the craziest things people were would just be like i can't believe he said that. yeah that 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 to me is garbage comedy right they're just going like i've seen younger comics go up there and just say outlandish stuff that is just hateful and mean that's not even funny or have a point and it's kind of like a, a mean statement and it's like yo that's to me, that should be punished because that's no thought. You're really not doing the work to be a comedian. You're just trying to get a big reaction from the crowd. That's your payoff. It's them to go, whoa, that's fucked up. You know, and that's that's not what you're in comedy for. You know what I mean? Like Dave Chappelle, he'll cover a bunch of real issues, but you find the funny or you understand his opinion. And I really feel he, on and we're talking about the Saturday Night Live set, I don't feel like any of that came from a hateful place. It came from a observational, like, huh, this is interesting place. Where I've seen some comedians come from a hateful place, and it's very different. Look, I've been called racial slurs, and I have this whole new joke about it, right? And I'm not going to say the racial slur, but I think I said the joke. At, no, maybe I did the joke. Yeah, did. I did. So I've been called that in a hateful way. And I've been called that in a, oh my God, we share this moment way, right? There's two different ways to say everything. It's intention, right? It's intention. So I think we're losing a lot in the conversation is intention. It's, all right, they said it, but how they mean it, you know? And in my new joke, what I'm so good at, what, what I so love about, I'm digging deeper. Because I could easily, in the joke, say that person's racist and move on. But no, I want to find out why they said that certain thing to me in such a uplift, like in such a way that made them excited to tell me, like to share this moment. So obviously, them telling it wasn't hateful, but it's still messed up. They said it in front of me. But why are they trying to connect with me that way? So that's where my comedy has grown, where it's not just stamping it racism and move on. It's, oh, let's dig deeper. And find out why they're actually saying that to me. So that's that. And I think Dave Chappelle is the master at that. Of kind of digging to a deeper le level. You know. I don't know. But there's other specials Dave Chappelle did. Like I thought he was just preaching. And it was just there to get out a message. And I could agree with some of it. Could agree. Like but the. But you know. Comedy is subjective. You know. I, I, I'm not a huge George Carlin fan. I wasn't around in, during his time. I never, I would never go out and seek his comedy, but what I like about it is things he said are still relevant today. It's kind of like to me, NWA, when they first came out as a rap group, Ice Cube, Easy, and all these guys, they were talking about police brutality and things that happened 30 years ago, 
and why that music will be timeless is because it's still happening today. Richard Pryor talked about police beatings. It's still happening today. You know, so it seems like the comedians, and this is what clicked to me, comedians that are just funny fade away. But it seems like comedians that are really saying something about that time, that time capsule that happened, when you go back 50 years from now, like when you go back 50 years from now and hear my COVID story on my special, you'll be like, yo, can you believe it was like that? See, that's what I'm excited about. It's like about. when I hear uh, the swine flu. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, oh my gosh. Like, I remember that. I was alive during that time. Yeah. Um, that, that's crazy. And and back to the um, what you were saying about the, the police brutality and ice yeah. cube stuff. Um, I read a story online that prosecutors were trying to use rap lyrics yeah. to prosecute rappers. Did you hear about this? Well, yeah. And the problem with that, rappers, look, it's kind of like they're, they're just asking, see, they're just asking the same that an author for a book gets. You see what I mean? I think now I don't, I'm, not, I'm not heavy into what the rappers are asking for or because – because I, I think, and I'm make, I'm maybe making this up because I watch so many movies, that if a, a writer writes a book about like a murder, he can't be convicted from from that murder. No, that's not how that works. No, no. Or like if you write a book, I I don't know. There's some. You're kind of like you're thinking like the O.J. Simpson thing. No, I'm thinking of like I don't. I look like I said on the law side, I'm not informed on it. But I just think they're like, just because we rap about it, that's okay. That's like a writer writing a murder mystery. And then you're going, hey, man, this dude commits murders. You know, like. Or like, think about the the, the Ice Cube reference, yeah. right? He has a like a, a song, Today Was a Good Day or something, yeah. right? And he's talking about how it was a good day because nobody got shot up. Yeah. Okay. Now, what if you use that in court? You're like. Well, on a normal day, two people get shot up. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I think it just goes back to the to the thing of like people say crazy stuff, and I think a lot of the rappers nowadays are crazy with it. They're like, but a lot of these rappers, I mean, to be honest with you, have gone through real stuff like yes. that too. So it's kind of like they're writing what talk they, about. Yeah, they're yeah. writing what they know. They didn't necessarily commit the murder, even though in the song they could say they did, but. They've like, seen it. Or like Eminem would have never been a, a thing, right? Because he talks about so much stuff he supposedly... Have done to Kim. Yes. If, if a, he has a song where he stuffs Kim in a trunk and yes. drives over a cliff. Yes, a great... I thought it was great. It's a phenomenal... Uh, what, I forgot the name of that song. Stan, I think, maybe? I'm not sure. But uh, it was about the kid writing him a letter and getting mad and whatever. I don't know. But he said so many... So it's a thing where it's art, I guess. And... See, even yeah. you're down in it. You're saying, I guess. No, it is art. Yes. It is art. It's a different kind of art. Yes. Uh, but should they be responsible? No, I don't think they should be responsible for lyrics, you know, because Two Live Crew went through that, you know, and they were just nasty music. You know what yeah. I mean? And be like, oh, we got to ban that. It's like, yo, people are going to say what they're going to say, you know? Like, you know what you should ban is... American people being ripped off by the government on a lot of things. Like we're spending way too much money on this and that. Like all the, like the president, when they go somewhere, spending hundreds or millions of dollars in security. Yo, don't go nowhere. You know, stay in the White House. Yo, don't go nowhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, I, I'm like, those are things like where politicians know what stocks are going to go up because they control the laws. Like, let's get rid of that. Does nobody stuff. think it's shady that, Politicians make hundreds of thousands of dollars a but year. But they, they're millionaires? But they're million, multi-millionaires. How do you think that happens, Alex? Exactly. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, rappers write red... lyrics. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Why can't we flag that kind of stuff instead of rap lyrics? It's so ridiculous. But, but it goes to show, and I've said this several times on the podcast, these people up top, they're like, look at this show. We got all these peasants, and I'm including that. And even these rich celebrities are... Look at these peasants fighting with each other while we get away with everything up here. We're just puppeteers and we're like fighting with each other or always punching down at a person that makes minimum wage that can't do nothing where we're letting this person up top get away with everything. 
Let him be mad about Dave Chappelle. <laughs> yeah, look at him mad about Dave Chappelle. Let's rip off everybody again. You know, let's not charge taxes to certain people because they have big co- like that's that's the whole thing. You know, it's just it's it, it's terrible. But we love America. We love living in it, and I think it it was great to see this election play out. And I just feel like what I'm excited about is that yo, it seemed like we're getting back. I don't want to say normal. But it's getting back to, okay, let's common sense. Let's all have some common sense here. I'm just happy that the door knockers and the techs are hopefully going to go. You see, you don't have door knockers. No, you they live, can't get in the neighborhood. You live in a gated <laughs> neighborhood, okay? Yeah. You t- don't take that for granted because my house, I'm not even joking you, one to three times a day. What do they do? For the last month ever and answered? a half to two months. Have you ever answered? Yes, I answered once on accident. And what did they say? Uh, first of all, they ask, they address you by name. So they're well, like, which is freaky. Yes. They're like, are you Alexander Nava? And I'm like, Ooh. I'm like, depends who's asking, you know? And they're like, I, I just wanted to take some time to talk to you about, uh, voting and, and, oh, you know, man. who you can support I mean, or whatever. God love those people, but that's kind of intrusive. Don't come to my house. That's intrusive. I feel like you should have to opt in for stuff like that. Yes. You know? Yes. And I'm sure there's a way to opt out, but sometimes opting out makes it worse. Really? Yeah. It's like, have you ever heard about the uh, the no call list? No. Okay. So there's a, a national do not call. Yes. Register. I've heard about it. Yes. You can put your phone number on there. And what that means is it bans uh, telemarketers from calling you. So now if they call you, it's illegal, right? But now your name goes on a list with your phone number. Do you think scammers who are doing illegal stuff or companies who do shady things that yeah. don't care about the law, do you think they're really going to look at that? That's a free database. Yeah, I'm it like, is. So it's like, it's like, yeah, you're going to stop getting calls from companies who actually follow the rules. But you know what? You just ramped up everything else. I feel like it would, it would be the same thing as that, but politically. Yeah, no, you're so, right. You're right. All right. Uh, if you guys want to leave any comments, please do so below. My schedule. This week, I'm in Hawaii. I will be performing at 808 Comedy Club in Hawaii. The whole family is going to be out there. Would love to see you. Then after that, North Carolina. I'm in St. Louis, and I end the year in Springfield, Massachusetts. So get your tickets, michaelyo.com. What are you pimping? Oh, what are you promoting? Excuse me. Wow. Pimping. Hey, just check out my YouTube channel, Alexander Nava. That's it. All right. We'll see you next time on The Yo Show. Later. (laughs) 